We're going to make three color wheels for each of the systems in use today. The traditional, the oldest system for paint and pigments, the additive for light emitting devices, and the subtractive for printing processes. Ink is the medium for the subtractive and light for the additive system. Let's start with the additive system and we're going to be using the RGB swatches. These are formulated exactly to produce the appropriate primary and secondary colors for the additive system. And I've adopted these panels for easy access and we are in the HSV slider mode. You can click on this little triangle and make sure you're in HSV slider mode so that you can control and see the U saturation brightness of all of these colors. So starting with the additive system, the primary colors are red, green, and blue. As you can see where it says RGB. So red, first color, green is the second color, and blue is the third primary color, and they go in the larger swatches. Let me mm -hmm. zoom in. For the secondary colors, we have yellow, cyan, and magenta. Now notice that each one of these colors is at, if you're looking up here, at 100% saturation and brightness. And each one is mathematically precise. 0, 60, 120, 180, 240, 300. That makes it very easy to determine the intermediate colors. So halfway between 0 and 60 is color number 30. And again, we want to make sure that the, the saturation and brightness is at 100%. Halfway between color 60 and 120 is color number 90, the perfect yellow green. And halfway between 120 and 180 is 150, the perfect cyan green. And halfway between 180 and 240 is 210, the perfect cyan blue. And halfway between 240 and 300 is 270, the perfect violet. And perfect meaning that it represents the wavelength of light measured for that U. Halfway between color 300 and 360, or zero, is color 330, the perfect magenta red. Now, these colors are unique to this system because they are about the wavelengths of light. Now, when we combine the three primary colors, as you'll see from the readings and the lectures and the visual examples, the interactive examples, combining red, blue, and a green light together produces white light. All the wavelengths of light add up to white light. Now let's do the subtractive color system next. We're going to be making sure that we're selecting the CMYK color swatches and not switching back and forth between the two because the colors are very different. For the subtractive color system, the primary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. And they're different from the cyan, magenta, and yellow used in the secondary colors here. So even though the primary and secondary colors seem to be inverted or switched, for the systems, the colors are not the same. So very important to select the appropriate color. For example, if you notice this, this magenta here is color number 324 at 93% brightness and 100% saturation. This magenta is color 300 at 100% saturation and brightness. Very different color. Same thing for the uh, yellow is color number 57. It's still at 100% saturation and brightness, but it is not uh, the same as the other one. And for the, um, the cyan color, it is color number 196 and 94% saturation, or 94% brightness, rather than color 180. So extremely important to select the proper color swatches. These are formulated so that when we're printing, the colors come out in a more balanced tonality. Okay, now for the secondary colors, we have red, CMYK red. This green and this blue. So each one of them are very distinctly different from the other, the secondary colors or the primary colors of the additive system. Now, in between, this is where it gets a little tricky for these colors. Uh, so halfway between, you kind of have to scroll a little bit just to see what color might look properly. Uh, you know, you open this and, you know, so you get a, 
a little bit larger, so you're going up to red. That looks a little bit more too, a little bit too red. And you know, there, there are different ways to do this. You want to find a color that looks just a little bit more balanced, halfway between the two. So there's no real uh, mathematical precision to this because you know it repl replicates the idea that colors are formulated a little bit differently based on the calibration of how the colors mix in the printer. So, you know, get as close as you can. I mean, I think that one might be just a little bit too red. So, you know, you can play around with this until you get a color that looks good on your computer monitor. I'm going to Command V, go back to that. That looks okay. All right, so then you can go through between red and yellow. Orange is pretty easy at color number 30. Here, this green is color number 149, and this is color 57. So, if we go for, say, color number 90, 95 or 100, that looks like a, a decent yellow green. It looks pretty bright though, um, so you can tone it down a tiny bit to make it look like it is halfway between those two colors. So it's got some black in the mix. Uh, halfway between 149 and 196, say maybe color 175. And uh, I'm going to tone that one down a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a blue-green, cyan green kind of a color. There we go. And halfway between uh, this one at 196 and this one at, say, 238, somewhere maybe 220 or 217, somewhere, somewhere in that range. That's a little bit dull, so I'm going to make this one a little bit more like the color on the other side of it, so I'm going to brighten that up a bit and see how that looks. It looks pretty good. Blue. Halfway between blue at color number 238 and uh, this magenta at 325, we want a color pushing more towards um, violet, say 270 or 280, and I don't think it needs to be as dull, a little bit richer, so I'm going to increase the saturation and brightness. It looks a little bit halfway between those two. I think that looks good. And then when I combine magenta, yellow, and cyan inks together, the color also subtracts out. So we get a color that's more like a black. So I'm going to go down to black to represent that. Now for the traditional color wheel, the RGB color swatches for red, yellow, and blue paint work very well as if we are using red, yellow, and blue primary colors of paint that are formulated to mix together to create really nicely balanced orange, green, and violet. Not all red and yellow paints mix to create a really nice orange, and not all yellow and blue paints make a nice green, and not all blue and violet, uh, or blue and red paints make a good violet. So the colors have to be formulated to create, or um, to mix together to pr produce an accurate intermediate color. So uh, halfway between red at uh, zero and yellow at 60 is color 30, and 100% saturation there, 100% brightness, and now I've got orange, halfway between yellow and blue is color number 120, now it's similar to the other ones, but notice that it's a really vivid green. This color looks more like the green of the additive system, so blue paint mixed with, with yellow paint tends to produce a color that's a little bit darker. Now I'm a painter so I'm very familiar with how these colors mix so I, I always darken that one down similar to what we do with the subtractive color system and halfway between red and violet or red and blue is violet and we know from this system that that color makes the perfect violet so there we go it looks like a nicely balanced color. Now we want to go mathematically, halfway between color number 0 and 30 is 15. That gives us a nice intermediate red-orange. So you see that the secondary colors in each, and the, ter and the ter uh, intermediate colors for each system are unique to that system. So halfway between orange and yellow is color 45, yellow-orange. Halfway between color yellow uh, at 60 and 120 is color 90. So that makes a nice yellow green, and you could darken it down a tiny bit if you wanted to, so that it looks like it's just got a little bit of that darker quality from the green, uh, from the blue paint in the mix. And uh, color number 180 is halfway between 
green and blue, but notice it's a bright cyan. Cyan is not a color in that yellow and blue paint would mix. Uh, that's a, a different kind of a wavelength of color. So you want to darken that down and make it look more like a blue green, somewhere between the two. And the same thing, halfway between 240 and 270, color 255. And we don't need to darken that one down because it is already a rich enough color, a dark, deep enough color that it looks like it's balanced. When you go too dark, it looks dull. So some colors need to be at 100% saturation brightness, others just slightly reduced in brightness. And halfway between uh, violet and red is a magenta. So I'm going to go, say, color number 315. You could maybe go to 300 or something or 310, but notice it looks more like a magenta. So I want to darken it down again so that it looks more like a blend, a red violet. Now I want to combine the three primary colors together, red, yellow, and blue paint mixed together, make a, a really kind of muddy gray or a black color because the color subtracts out. So now we have three color wheels representing each of the systems in use today.